Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about three books that I've read for my Reading Around the World project. I haven't been doing these videos for the past year because I've been doing Invisible Cities, but for this video at least I'm going to group the two because I've read one book for Invisible Cities. That should be two, isn't it? Yeah, I read of Algeria, but I already made a separate video for that. But right now I want to talk about one book that I've read for Guyane, uh, one book that I've read that is set in India, and one book that is set in Bangladesh. So I thought I'd talk about them all three together because they're also about similar, similar-ish cultures. Um, let's start with the book that is set in Bangladesh. This one was not Invisible Cities related, it was really just one that I felt like reading at that time. Now, I didn't know anything about Bangladesh, as it turns out. This happens more often, and this one is set around the time of the War for Independence. Um, so Bangladesh, apparently, as it turns out, uh, used to be part of Pakistan. But if you know what the map is like, you'll know that Bangladesh is on the other side of India. And that is still like a result of the partition and like what the uh, English Empire used to be like. So when the partition happened, Pakistan and India separated. But there was still this region on the other side of India that was at that point called uh, East Pakistan. It then became East Bengal, so just the name changed. And in the 70s, I'm unsure, I think in the 70s, um, Bangladesh decided it wanted to become Bangladesh and not be part of uh, Pakistan. Partly because Pakistan was too far away. They thought like, how can those people that are living over there decide about us? And there were also a little bit of shifts in the culture as well. Uh, so this book talks about that, but it talks about it from the point of view of the mother of a family, which I thought was a very interesting take. So the mother of our family is called Rashmi, and uh, her children are, she's got two children uh, who are adults, and both of them uh, in different ways start playing a role in the revolution. They both join the, the revolutionaries, uh, he starts to fight, she has more of an administrative role, and as a mother, Rashmin has opinion on that. She doesn't really like her children doing that. And it was really interesting to see, you know, the situation of, okay, yes, I want my country to be independent, but do I want it so much that I'm okay with my children being in danger? I thought that was an interesting take, uh, a very relevant take. There are a lot of mothers out there. Uh, so I really like that, and because of the role of her children, she also starts to be sucked in a little bit and start doing stuff. And it was also interesting because um, I think on the one hand, it's very understandable that a mother is very protective towards her children, but somehow in this book, there was an extra element to it because uh, when the children were young, um, their father passed away, and because their mother didn't have any a lot of financial possibilities. There was a period of two years where they had to stay with their aunt and uncle. And that really is, was a traumatic experience for uh, Rashmin, the mother. She was, she's extra protective. And I know it felt, that on the one hand, that made that the story was, you know, a little bit fuller because you had more of a history and something happened. On the other hand, because it made that the mother was overly protective, I felt it felt like it felt like because of that she was overly she was very protective instead of her protectiveness just being a result of being a mother and parents are often very protective towards their children. So I don't know if that element really added something to it. Um, I wonder if if that had not happened, we would have seen her actions through different eyes, whether then we would have thought, ah, you know, this is a mother instead of, ah, I mean, of course she's had that happen to her, so now she's overly protective. That was an interesting thought that I was, I've been wondering about a little bit. Now, one thing that I, I struggled with, though, is that the character didn't really come alive. And I don't know whether that is because I'm not a mother and therefore Though rationally, I completely understand all the struggles that she went through and her emotions with seeing how children do whatever. Um, emotionally, I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't connect with it. I think that is absolutely a me thing because I just don't have that experience of being a mother. I and mean, maybe that's, I don't know, that could be a thing. I, I'd be very curious 
to see. Maybe I should research that if other people have had that same experience. This is the first book in a trilogy and I'm not entirely sure I'm going to read the other ones. On the one hand, I do want to learn more about that part of history because I know nothing about it, as I have shown. Um, and I always like to learn about stuff like that through books, so that would be interesting and this is an interesting take. Um, also, the mother, uh, she has tenants who are Hindus and because of the war and because of the position of Hindus and Indians and in this Muslim culture, they stuff happens to them and I thought there are a lot of interesting components but because I'm not connected, I wasn't connected with the characters, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. And if I'm not sure, seeing all the books that I really want to read right now, I don't think it's gonna happen. But you never know, maybe at a later stage, maybe when I have more a, a different life experience, somehow start, things will start making sense. So that's A Golden Age by Tahmima Aman. The other book that I read is set in contemporary India, and I've been thinking, I'm not sure if this is the first contemporary Indian book. I think a lot of the other books that I've read that are set in India were historical fiction. So this was good, definitely, for that. Uh, so that is A Burning by Megan Majumdar, I think. Menga Majumdar, good. Uh, contemporary India. We have a young woman called Chivan and she's accused of having been part of a terrorist attack uh, in which uh, there was a train accident and a lot of people died. And uh, so she's put in prison to that and a lot of people suddenly feel very different about her and there's the whole country turning against her, turning against this woman who keeps saying, I'm innocent, but they're like, nope, you're not, and hating her. Um, and a lot of the story is also about her being in prison and her talking to a journalist who's trying to find out and the results of stuff being put in newspaper on her life, on her family. That's the main storyline. And then we've got two other characters who are kind of attached to that story. We've got an old teacher of Jivan called P.T. Sir. He finds out that she is accused of this. He's like, oh, I would never have believed it. He believes it directly. And he starts as an interesting storyline because he starts to be part of a political party, slowly but surely. And through that line, you see like the corruption that he slowly becomes a part of and his role suddenly also as time goes on again a little bit in Chivan's life. And then we've also got another character called Lovely who has this vibrant voice. Uh, she ha has Jivan's alibi but doesn't have a trouble like connecting and she's a very passionate person who believes in you know truth she wants to be an actress and she was a lovely character to read from because of her passion and honesty and like dealing with a lot of struggles but just going ahead and being a boss lady. So she was really nice to read from. P.T. Sir's character was very interesting, even though I think there was a very good difference between the characters. They were really all their, their separate people. I love Lovely's voice and what she went through. And with P.T. Sir, I was like, you slimy little man. <laughs> and very interested in what he's going through, but his character was very different and that was palpable. And somehow with Jivan, I don't really have a memory of her her being and I that's possibly because of her story and her feeling downcast and attacked and not able to inhabit the space that she's that she's allowed to have because her the space that she has is just being closed on her. She doesn't have she can't be herself. So I think that was interesting. The more I think about the book, the more I appreciate how it's been done. But I really don't think that in a couple of months I'll still remember it very well. And I don't really know what that is. Maybe it was because of the time that I was reading it in. But I do love it when we have these different voices that shine through and I thought that was interestingly done. Maybe it's just the plot that didn't do much for me. I think that might be the conclusion because I do remember uh, oftentimes I remember books through plots and I don't really remember characters and this is one where the characters shine through and because that is not something that I personally often do well with, now this one will, will like 
disappear a little bit but I think this is one that um, I'm glad I've read now because now I appreciate characters a little bit more and I think that a couple of years ago I wouldn't even have seen all that. I'd be interesting to see other books that this author writes. I think this was her debut novel um, but if this is the way she's go reading writing characters then the future is going to be bright. And the third book I wanted to talk about, this one is historical fiction again, and this one I read for Invisible Cities in February, and one of those countries that was picked was Guyana. Now, let's start talking about Guyana itself, because I started doing my research, and after half an hour I realized that I had only been looking at books written by French Guyana authors. And those are different countries. <laughs> of course, there, there. I mean, there are. There's like Guyana, then you've got Suriname, and then you've got French Guyana. So that was already a bummer. You know, it's, it, you know, you don't know a lot about the world, and it's love, and there's like, oh, but this is this is how little I know about the world. So then I looked at Guyana authors and uh, ended up choosing A Marriageable Age by Shannon Mass. Um, actually, I did this also as a buddy read with uh, someone in the Invisible Cities Discord, which was nice because we could show our experiences a little bit. Now, this one is set from the point of view of three characters, and it's not all set in Guyana, which I was at the beginning of like, no, but this, I want something to learn about Guyana, and why is India also in there? And I was surprised at the Hindu community in Guyana. But I know that there's a Hindu community in Suriname, so why would that only be in that country? It's, it makes sense. It makes total sense. So our three characters. On the one hand, we have Saroj, who is a young girl in Guyana, and she has a very strict father who really wants her to adhere to Hindu norms and cultures and one does not want her to even go to school maybe and she wants us to, to her to marry at 12 he's angry at another woman who's trying to um, increase the limit the minimum age for marriage for girls to be married and they struggle a lot she hates her father there's a lot of things that he does that she does not understand and there's a lot of resentment there and she's also a little bit influenced with by a friend of hers who is allowed to have this very free life uh, so that's the Roach. Then we have got Nat. He is a young boy. All of these three characters we follow from when they are uh, young children to adulthood. Even a little bit? Uh, do we have later? No, adulthood. Uh, so Nat, he is raised in a village in India and it's a very poor village and his father is English uh, and he's a doctor and he's one of those doctors that he, he wants Nat, he adopted Nat, and he really wants Nat also to also become a doctor and to be this important role in the village and make sure that the lives of the villagers improves, not, not in a, oh, look at me helping, but in a please help these people kind of ways. He's a very kind-hearted father. And Nat, in the beginning, when he's a child, he absolutely wants to follow those footsteps, but as he grows older and is sent to England to look, study and learn to be a doctor, he goes away from that and he doesn't understand why he should give up his life and he wants to just have freedom and be with girls and there's all of that playing around and uh, him not knowing whether he wants to go back to see his father and all that kind of stuff. And the third voice is that of Savitri. She's a wonderful voice. She's a young girl whose father and whose family works for an, Indi uh, an English uh, family who lives in India and she becomes friends with their son and through them she kind of see that there's another past, past, path possible for her and she starts to she sees on the one hand that her father and her family have certain expectations of what her life is going to be like and her being married finding a, a marriageable partner and whatnot and on the other hand she sees through her friend and through that life that there is more possible that she's an intelligent that she likes to read she wants to become a doctor because she has a lot of affinity with healing and with animals and with plants and she starts seeing that there's more and her friend I think he's called Simon David David um, he kind of pulls her into that he wants her to have that life because they're in love and he 
he struggles with seeing the how she is pulled apart by her family and what she wants at the same time. It's like, no, but he's he's he, he thinks that he can get anything that he wants because that's how he's been raised. He just has to lift his little finger and his parents are at his feet. So he says, yeah, but we can get married when we're older and you can come to school because I want it. So it's going to happen. So there's this interesting dynamic. And uh, we see also with her how she and her family are treated by these uh, English in India and how they viewed the locals and there was a lot of a lot of bad stuff there uh, and you know stuff of all sort there uh, I've already said way too much about these books I really loved a mar of married <laughs> I kind of nearly fell off my ball here I'm sitting on one of those bouncy balls anyway uh, I really like this book because there's slow developments and uh, their his stories are intertwined in an interesting way at the end. The end goes really fast. At one point, things just, just go and it went a little bit too fast for me. And there's stuff that I'm like, oh, that, just, that wouldn't have been necessarily to put in there. Some of the romance stuff was not necessary for me. It did make the book a little bit lighter because there's also some rough stuff happening. Um, there is uh, stuff about miscarriages and being in a violent relationship and... I think also uh, abuse with alcohol and rape uh, and there's also the war on one hand so there's there's difficult things in there but I thought that the romance stuff made it a little bit too light but I did like to see how these characters evolved through time and how similar yet different their environments were I loved seeing the similarities in cultures though Spatially, these places were very far removed and seeing how what the one was going through was similar to another For different reasons for different with kind of different backgrounds I thought that was there were good nuances in the story that I thought worked very well. It's a somewhat larger book I think it was about 500 pages uh, From what I remember because I listened to it on audio, but uh, it didn't feel like a book that you really had to plow through I really liked the rhythm. There were some kind of resting points and I really liked Savitri's story more than the others. I loved her voice. Uh, she was very joyful. And the others too, especially when they're kind of growing up, I thought like, you're, you two are ungrateful brats. <laughs> but still, I really like, uh, yeah, I really like this book. I'm not sure it's a great, like, Gian and I want to understand Giada pick because it has a lot more about Indian culture, but and a lot of it is set in India, but, you know, countries are not just one thing, and that is what this book showed. Part of what this book showed. Uh, so those were the three books that I've read. If you've read any of them, I'd love to hear from you, or if you've read other books that are set in either Bangladesh or uh, in Guyana, I would also love to hear about that, because I'm on the outlook for more stories <laughs> set in uh, different countries than my own. Uh, Thank you for watching. See you in another video. Bye. Pa chum, pa chum, chum.